Uh, hey guys, so we're going to um, do a sort of second part um, of, we'll say, three parts to the sort of idea of, of warping text to fit inside a specific shape. Now before what we did was we used a predetermined shape um, to uh, create a, a basic kind of like, you know, a simple, uh, simple like, like single form um, we sort of word uh, art, right? So we took like initials or like the word ace or your name or something like that and we just fit it into one thing and and I think some of you even found that even then it, it can sometimes give, give you some unpredictable results depending on like say for instance the spacing of the letters or the angle of the square or depending on how you made your diamond things like that. So it's it's an interesting little um, kind of a, a, a script they have there. And so in this case, we're going to take, take matters into our own hands and we're going to create a um, sort of a word art uh, uh, mixed with a little bit of a little, little bit of a, a of shape building, a little bit of um, of a drawing to uh, to create a, a sort of a, a different kind of a thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just make any old um, canvas here. I got my, my normal five by five. You can make it uh, whatever dimensions you want to make it. I would make it bigger than say three by three. I make it. I make it big enough to be seen. And I'll just uh, press create here. And I have found a picture of a shark. I'm just going to paste it in here and zoom out a little bit. And what we'll do is we'll just shrink that down to where it's the size of the artboard here. And I'm going to place it right about there in the middle of the artboard. I'll center that up here. Um, so what I'll do first is I'm going to make this a little bit more transparent and I'm just going to pull it down to like 50% of the opacity over here in your properties. Once again, I'm working in Essentials, so there's several different workspaces you can work with. I'm working with Essentials, um, but what you, you can always, um, you know, if, if ever you are uh, lost at what's, what's being seen here, you can always press Reset Essentials and it'll uh, bring back basically what I've got because I've got just the basic essentials here. Um, so before moving on, I'm gonna go ahead and lock this layer down like I did for most of most of the things. I don't uh, worry about selecting this when I'm trying to move things around. And I'm just going to write uh, type the word shark. Now I'll, I'll go ahead and start this by saying I'm, I'm gonna basically do this entire design and it might get a little uh, you know, kind of labor intensive here, um, but I'm just gonna show you all I've done. Do not feel like you have to watch this entire thing. Um, if you want to get like the gist of it and then go your own way, that's fine. If you want to choose a different animal or not even an animal, if you want to choose like a, like a car or something like that, I will say this, you want to choose something whose silhouette is easily visible, um, whose, whose silhouette is easily recognizable. So if you have like, you know, a picture of an elephant, say from the side where it, with its trunk kind of like, you know, hanging out one, one direction and it's, it's big, you know, you know, flat feet visible. And so that that's, that's probably good. If you have like an elephant kind of from a three quarter angle to where it looks like in a silhouette, kind of like a big old mound that might not work quite so well. Um, so think about what you want to do. If it's a car, that's fine. Um, if it's a, a person like maybe for instance, the Michael Jordan, you know, Air Air Jordan logo with with his you know legs splayed while he's dunking. That's that's obviously a very good one. You know, Elvis doing his his little dance that he does, and that, that's another you know easily recognizable one. Um, but but think about what you want to do, and just think of one word that you can place within it, um, and um, and make sure it's at least five letters. You want to have at least five letters because if if you have to spread it out too far, it might get a little bit hard to understand. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. <clears throat> All right, so moving on, I have chosen the word shark to put on my shark here. And I'm gonna go to my properties and I'm going to make this into a real thick, chunky font. Now, impact is a good tried and true one. Um, I might choose something a little bit more square, something along the lines of maybe Berlin Sands. Uh, I want to say I used Market Deco at one point for uh, a similar thing, but I will find, uh, once again, we're looking for a sans serif font. We don't want to bother with all those little stems. The stems are going to cause, we definitely, we definitely don't want a script font. We want a sans serif font that's pretty simple. What is this one? Gourmet Hearth. What does this look like? Let me make this bigger. You can see it. Okay, that's good. All right, so I don't think you have this on your computer, but if you, if you, if you have something that you like, uh, obviously you can... Um, use it, and if it's one of those, and if it's one of those words, or one of those type typefaces that has uh, all all caps, um, that's even better. If not, just make sure you type it all in capital letters, um, because once again, uh, the, the the capital letters tend to be more sort of like 
uh, square form, a little, little more regular, a little more precise. <clears throat> okay, so I've got my word shark. Um, once you have your word typed out, obviously pause the video if you want to go find, hunt down a, an image or hunt down a, um, uh, a, a word to use. I'm going to go to type, I'm going to go to create outlines. And here's uh, here's we have our, our our drawing now. We could we could apply any number of effects to this if we wanted to. But before we do anything else, I'm going to go over here to object. And I'm going to hit expand, which is going to separate this into you know different letters. Then I'm going to go to object ungroup. So I'll be able to select each letter individually. Um, so essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to squish and like warp each letter to kind of fit into this shark's silhouette into its outline. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to you know so the outline shows it pretty well. The red outline shows it pretty well. Um, but we're going to use a different tool here. We're going to go back to Object Envelope Distort, and I'm going to say Make with Mesh. And I'll say four rows by four rows. That's fine. And um, I'll press OK, and you instantly see this familiar little thing here. Now we had a, a very similar um, shape to this with uh, with our um, warp tool in Photoshop. Um, so it's the same concept, um, except uh, you know the only difference I would say is that once you apply this, it's it's no longer an object that you can then do like the shape builder tool tool and, and various other other things. You have you have to um, essentially. Uh, work with it as its as its own thing. So I'm going to go ahead and get in real close here. And uh, notice before I started, I kind of shrunk it down a little bit. I want to see if I can't shrink it down to sort of uh, about the height that I want it, because um, once again, it, it gets a little tricky to um, shape these things. And so, um, in order to manipulate this, I'm going to go over here to my mesh tool. Right, the mesh tool is this. It looks like a sort of a, a, a warped uh, grid over here. Uh, you can just press U on the keyboard. And you're going to find you have a couple different options here. Um, if you hover over one of the anchor points, you'll see this little word pop up that says anchor. It's hard to see on my screen, but it's a little, little magenta where this is anchor. And this little grid pops up there too. You can just click and then drag, and it'll move that around. And this right here doesn't do a whole lot, but if I were to get one that's like very close to, the, say, say, for instance, the black of the, of, the, uh, of, of the word here, it'll pull that out. And um, if I were to say, for instance, or drag this, one here down a bit, you can kind of see the outline of the shark peeking through if I were to keep at it. So, all right, so it's hard to see right there, so I'll move this one down as well. Here we go, okay, we're getting there. All right, okay, cool. All right, so I can kind of see the outline of the shark, so I'll, I'll just move this up slightly just to see if I can't get that in there. Now, um, one thing you'll notice, and I'll get a little closer here, is that now we've got these weird little kind of kinks in the, in the grid here. So if I were to follow this line, we want this like this line goes straight, and then it hits this little anchor, and then it stops, and then it kind of goes up a little bit, and then it goes back down, then it goes up, and it goes down. We want those to be as smooth as possible. So we want them to kind of line up as best we can. So I'll just take this, um, whoops, let me get my back here. I'll just use my space bar to move around. So once again, you on the keyboard to get your mesh tool. And I'll just pull this down a bit. Maybe I'll pull it back up some, just to kind of get it, get it to fit in. I want, I want the nose to be at least covered. And um, so what we'll do is I'm gonna click on this, and let me see if I can get my magnifier real quick. Uh, I'll just show you up close here that we have um, not just the anchor points, but we also have these little direction lines. And when you hover those, we, hear, we see the word handle. Um, if I were to click on those and drag those, I could, uh, and it's hard to kind of grasp things when you're in magnification mode here, but you can kind of see that it, it starts to bend the line a little bit. Um, so I can sort of pull this out and sort of smooth out that curve there. And then I can just use my space bar to kind of move around over here. And I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to grab onto the handles here and just sort of pull those around to where it makes this line a little bit more smooth. It's the same thing here. I'll just sort of smooth this out by grabbing this handle over here and dragging it upwards until it smooths out that line. And the same thing here, I'll grab this handle and I'll just sort of smooth it out. So it doesn't have those little kinks in them. Um, all right, let me just back out of magnification mode here. I might come in a little bit again, but I'm gonna basically just manipulate this grid until I can get um, my S to be fit in with uh, the silhouette of this shark's face. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down here to the bottom. I'm gonna start down here. And once again, I'm gonna go through this bit by bit. And if you want to, 
um, speed through this part. I don't blame you. I almost recommend it. Uh, but I'm just going to go through here and just sort of get this. And, and bit by bit, I'm, I'm going to um, kind of comment on good practices here. So, so here we go. I'm going to pull the bottom of this grid up a little bit here. Okay. Now, um, that didn't do a whole lot, so I'm going to pull up the, uh, the sort of middle part, the one, the one right above it. I'll pull it up here. That's good. It's starting to shape up some. Pull that up here as well. I might even pull this down some a little more. Pull this down as well. See if I can get that to line up with the chin. Maybe I'll pull this down even more. Oops. Can I get this to pull down some more? There we go. Alright. Alright, so now I've got that S just about covered down um, over the silhouette of the, of the shark's mouth. Uh, I'm going to w go through this bottom row here and see if I can't smooth out the kink of this line. So once again, click on this. I'll get my anchors here and I'll just, I'll just move the handles to where it smooths out that line so there's not so many kind of harsh peaked kinks throughout the, uh, the mesh along the bottom there. Alright, that looks good. And Okay, so that smooths that out really nicely. Okay, the other sort of rule of thumb is when you when you get this uh, going, you want to try to keep um, the sort of the lines going in, in what we'll call like a, a sort of a, a common sense direction. So, for instance, if it's narrow over here, you want the lines to be more sort of they, you want them to converge a bit and then sort of spread out, as it were. So, you want them to kind of be as evenly spaced as you can. So, for instance, I'll get my mesh tool here. I'll move this one here back a bit. And also make sure I smooth that line out some in here. Okay, that's good. I might smooth this out a bit. This one too. Oh. Now I'll explain what just happened in just a second here. that a little bit closer here and I'll just make this line kind of go in the same direction as the line above it all right and then here's what we'll do now what we'll do is we'll sort of smooth out the vertical lines here and there we'll pull that through that one two that one looks good right about there this one I can pull around that way this one here good all right, smooth out this line, and we're just about done. I'll pull this one down some just to kind of space out the sort of ball of the S there. Now, clearly, if you wanted to get really, really, really tedious with this, uh, you could spend a long time getting every little detail right. You could spend a long time kind of working through this. I'm just going to go ahead and say you may want to just give yourself a break and just give yourself like a sort of a, a good enough so long as uh, you can kind of tell uh, that it's uh, matching up with the, with the silhouette. So I'm going to back this up here. I'm going to say that's okay. All right. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to have my K. I'm going to put my K in next. And I'm going to put my K in not on the tail, but like right here before the tail. So I'm going to have a little graphic that's going to put the tail, you know, into place right here. So I'm going to shrink this K down slightly. And I'll do just what I did before. I'll go to Object, Envelope Distort, Make with Mesh, or you can press Alt, Control, M. Four by four, press OK. And now I said before there's a couple options that you can do with this. One is grabbing the anchor itself. One is grabbing the handle of the anchor. And if you find that there's a bit of the letter that's not responding, say for instance, I pull this down here. Let me grab my Mesh tool. Remember, we can't use the Direct Select tool for this. We have to use the Mesh tool. Um, I'm just going to grab, pull, well first off I'll pull the ones in the middle towards the center here. I'll pull this one up a little bit. Pull everything in the middle towards each other. And that's just so I can kind of reach in there and, and, and move these around. I'll pull this straight down. 
That's good. Pull it straight up. All right, so there's that. Now this is starting to look a little bit weird, but another thing you can do, if you hover over the blank spaces, like not on the line, or even on the line, but not on the anchor points, you'll add another grid line. It'll go both the x-axis and the y-axis, and you can then manipulate that even further if you want, if you felt so inclined. Um, again, you, you kind of like, have to kind of do some trial and error to see which lines uh, you know affect it the most. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna start pulling in from the center. I'm gonna start sort of like along the center line here. I'll pull this in just a little bit just to make the center of the K go along that lateral line that sharks have. Did you know that sharks have this little interesting kind of electrical sense to uh, kind of tell where things are? They can kind of, kind of pick up on like distress signals from a fish's brain, you know, panic and stuff like that, things like that. They're, uh, they're, they're quite fascinating creatures. And I'll just uh, I'll pull this down here. Fish also have that lateral line that helps them tell you know, where the members of their school are, to, so they can kind of like move without really talking. They can move all in one unison, just by, by really fast electrical signals. That's a lot of fun. All right, so I'll pull this down here, and pull this K here. Now, um, you'll notice that it's starting to get a little little kinked up, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wait till the very end before I fix all the kinks. So I'll just pull this into, into shape here. Okay. Making sure I'm following along with the silhouette of the sharks. Oops, I had a new one. I don't want to add a new one at this point. Don't don't add a new grid until you you think you really need to. Even then, think twice. Okay. All right, looks about right up right there. And we'll just pull this down and this down as well. Now it's, it looks kind of bad, but it's not because of where we place the anchors. It's it's mostly down to the uh, to uh, where we've placed the uh, um, the the, an the anchor handles. So we'll go through there. So now that looks better. All right. So I'll, I'll get in a little closer and I'll see if I can uh, manipulate the handles here. Now again, um, give yourself a break. At some point, if you're if you're getting a little frustrated, just you know get get the basic shape down. And if you're having a hard time making it look just perfect. Uh, you know, give yourself, you know, seriously, give yourself a break. It's, 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 it's a, it's a different kind of a manipulation technique here. It takes a, it takes a bit of a, a steady hand and a little bit of patience. So if you, if you're getting frustrated, you're going to, you're going to make more mistakes. So just give yourself a, give yourself a break. Put on some soothing music. Stand up, you know, touch your toes. Something to keep you a little bit more balanced. I'm going to smooth out this bottom line here. Have the handles all kind of going in the same direction so there's fewer kinks in the line. Okay, and the same thing for the center here. I'll just pull this right around here. Oops, got a new one. And I would, I would periodically save your work just because this is the kind of stuff that you definitely don't want to lose progress on because this is. This is a kind of kind of time. It's 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 high uh, it's high labor kind of low yield kind of work here. So you really want to focus on making sure you're pr preserving what progress you make. Uh, sometimes if you click on the anchor point, you can you're, you, you can activate the, the handles to make them show up. There you go. I'm gonna just save real quick here. I'll call this shark. You can call it whatever you like. Make sure it's compatible with the uh, previous versions. It's always important. Backwards compatibility. You never know what kind of machine you're gonna be working on if you, or what what, what kind of machine your your clients are gonna be working on if they're asking you for something that they can print off. up some more here. This up some more too. 
What just happened? There we go. Something's going on with this okay here. Again, I'm going to give myself a break in a second here and just sort of call it done in a moment. Um, all right. So I'm going to pull that out a little bit here and smooth out this line. There we go. All right. So I'll just hit that and I'll click off that. And we'll just look back here. And I think we can kind of tell it's a K. All right. That looks all right. All right. And so now we have that. I'm going to bring my A down. I'll make my, I'll make my, my A next just so I can kind of space this out. I'll put my A right here in the center. I'll make this a bit bigger just so I can kind of uh, see where I'm going with this. And um, so this is where we were, we're going to like put our letters in place and we're going to do our own sort of kerning as it were. We're going to see if we can't uh, sort of minimize the spaces between the letters as best we can here. So I'll, I'll have that. Once again, I'm going I'm to use the keyboard uh, shortcuts, control alt M, and it's going to bring up our little envelope mesh uh, menu here. And I'll just start into this. I'll start from the bottom this time. So U on the keyboard for your mesh tool. Make sure your mesh tool is selected. And just once again, go through and line up these to the silhouette there. And even if you know, you're know you at a place in the grid that doesn't actually touch the silhouette, that doesn't have a, 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 rather a piece of the letter, um, you may want to go ahead and just you know grab that anyways. And I'll smooth this out just while we're here. Just add a new one. It's really easy to add a new one because it's because it's uh, it's it's real ticky work here. Get a little closer. You know, watch for that little handle to light up. Good uh, good rule of thumb here. Don't get discouraged. You know, because this is this is a a different kind of design. It's it's real um, kind of abstract. You know, it's like sculpting almost. It's not like drawing. You know, you're just sort of like you're sort of molding the letter, as it were with this mesh here and I want to say that's okay but I want this, something to happen in the middle here I want this to kind of maybe go in a certain direction I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this uh, this sort of warping kind of around the barrel of the shark you know the shark is you know at this point we can kind of see sort of the plane of the shark it's going from like you know uh, right to left it's getting sort of wider out this way so I'll get my mesh tool out here I'm gonna I'm gonna bulge this out kind of this way a little bit here It'll go along the, the whole line just to bulge this out some I'll kind of fix this. Then I'll pull this out too. Just a little bit. Down this way. Alright, there we go. About two. Open this out here. So. We'll continue on with that. We'll pull this out a little bit, and obviously, you know, you make your own judgments on terms of like what you want to have happen with your uh, with your design. You know, you're you're the uh, you're the chief when it comes to what you want to put in, what you think looks good. Um, but again, you want to make sure that you're following certain sort of uh, conventions to make it better understood, you know, like principles of grouping, just the way people recognize patterns, people kind of recognize when things aren't quite lined up right, when they're not really aligned correctly. Let me pull this out a little bit here. All right. Okay. All right, and I'll just do the last one here, just pull that out a little bit like so. might even the last little part of the grid too just to make sure it's all Got line up there and then pull this in some Okay. 
once again, I do not blame you if you speed through this. This is a uh, this is a little little uh, tedious right here. Oh, hello. All right. Um. All right. Okay. So I'll we'll, we'll put that there, and I'll just um get my uh, S. I'll, so you know whichever kind of fits in. So once again, the idea here is that you want to get your N, and you want to get your uh your beginning and your end kind of like situated here. You want to get your middle situated here, and you want to fill in the fill in the spaces with what's left. So I'm just gonna put the uh, the H here. I'll make the H sort of wide enough to fit between the two, but not too tall, so I don't have to keep you know going going back and back and forth among them. But uh, I'll just uh, once again. Well, first off, what I'll do is I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna go to Object Lock for now. I'll lock this down. Um, selection here. Um, so that way I don't have to worry about uh, selecting the, uh, the the A here, just because it sort of interferes. Uh, I'm not gonna worry so much about the, um, the S for now. But once again, you go to Object, Envelope Distort, Make with Mesh. Press OK. Now let's get it real close here. And I'll just uh, get my Mesh tool here. And I'll start in the center, kind of work its way up, just because that'll be like the center of it. And I'll just pull all this through. And I'll go a little faster this time. I'm just going to go through, kind of hit the basic, basic lines here. Looks good. Okay, I'll pull this all the way in. I'll pull this in a little bit more this way. Go ahead. Making sure they're kind of evenly spaced here. Once again, we'll make sure that we're kind of following a, a sort of similar pattern, as it were. All right, so there's that. Might even pull it, bulge this out some this way. To kind of like have it fill in the, the spaces here between that and the. And so I might even just pull it this way instead. Well, pull it this way. Go this way. Okay, so um, I'll just leave that there for now, and um, uh, you know, uh, if you wanted to spend a little more time getting that uh, all the kinks out there, you can. Um, but just to kind of wrap this up a little bit faster, I'll grab the R, and I'll pull the R down here. Now the same thing that I did before. I'll just make this just a bit bigger, okay, and I'm going to leave the dorsal fin and the flippers here, <clears throat> the pectoral fin. Um, alone and the tail alone, I'm, uh, and I'll, I'll explain what I'm going to do with those in a second here. All right, so once again, Control Alt M, press OK, and I'll just get into this. And uh, if you want to speed along through this, uh, by all means, and I'll, I'll I'll see you on the other side, and I'll explain how we're going to finish this up. Okay.
got it. All right, okay. Okay, so <clears throat> backing it up here. Um, I'm going to take off my um, thing there. I can kind of see I've got this sort of uh, surfboard shape uh, going on. If I want to make it really recognizable as a shark, I'm going to add a couple little accoutrement, as it were. So um, I'll go ahead and just um, uh, get my pen tool here. And I'll make sure my uh, fill is black for now, just to keep have it fit in. And I'm going to zoom in some to my dorsal fin here. I'm just going to use my pen tool to um, create my little dorsal fin, as it were. All right, so I'll just sort of pull it up there, and up there, and around there. Okay. Uh, now, in case you didn't know, um, you uh, obviously you can take your direct select tool and you can click on any one of these uh, anchor points here to manipulate the uh, curve uh, by grabbing on the little direction handles here. So I can just grab the little handle there and I'm gonna pull that down some. But say for instance, this um, this little guy here, maybe I wanted to like curve this line here above the R. Now I have a direction line going this way, but I don't have one going this way. Um, I can do a couple things here. What I can do is I can grab my pen tool, hold it down, and I can find my anchor point tool. So my anchor point tool is selected. I'm actually going to click on this anchor point, and by clicking on this, I can change it from um, a, sort of a, an angled, um, uh, uh, rather, a, 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 to, a, to, a, to a smooth um, anchor point here. I can actually grab this little handle here. I'm going to go back to my direct select tool, and I can just sort of pull this up a little bit like so. Right, and, and then we'll do the same thing over here. I'll grab this one. I might even curve this a little bit down. No, I'll just grab my anchor point tool. And I'll just kind of click on this and sort of pull this around a little bit like so. And I can then grab my direct select tool and I can manipulate both of these. This one can go up a little bit and this one can go out of it. Maybe I can grab this one here. Pull this up some. There we go. Cool. And maybe this one down a bit. Alright, so that gives me a little dorsal fin. Alright, good stuff. And I'll do the same thing with the fins down here. And I'll just grab my anchor tool, my, my pen tool, I'll just sort of make a curve, make another curve, make a third curve, like so. And I'll get my direct select tool and I'll just kind of fix that up a little bit just to make sure everything kind of fits in where it needs to go. Looks good. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing here for this little fin here. I'll make this a little bit thinner. Try to fit it inside this little kind of nook, as it were. Right there, that's good. My direct select tool going on here. Pull it around. Um, now obviously, whatever you've got, you know, you can just use your own judgment, and then I'll do the same thing with a with a tail here as well. I think I'll make the tail kind of like go in a little bit, like so, and then. truth here I guess. I'll just take a look at this. That looks like a shark. That looks like a shark. I like it. 
Okay, so now um, to finish it all up, what you want to do is uh, you want to select uh, everything here. And um, first off, we're going to object unlock all. Um, but I am going to keep um, the bottom layer locked. I'm going to select everything here. So I'll select everything. And before I can affect any change to this stuff, I have to go over here to object expand, which is going to change everything uh, from a blend, an, uh, an envelope. Uh, an envelope uh, mesh, rather, to a shape that has a fill and a stroke and everything else applied to it. Um, so let me just get my properties back here. And I'm going to change this to, say, like a, a steely gray, because that's that's what a shark is. Uh, I might even, I might, you know, I might even change it to a gradient. I'll just do this. I'll, 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 in fact, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just group all this together. You know, object group. And all I can do is, I, let's see if I can fill this up with a gradient. Let's see what happens. No, what I'll do is I'll do this. I'll, I'll go to Object Compound Path Make, and I'll uh, I'll fill that in with a with a gradient here. So let me get my gradient options going, uh, and I'm going to grab uh, my gradient. I'm going to flip it over onto its side, it's 90 degrees, and I'm going to have it go from like a dark gray on the top. So we'll start over here. Look at my swatches up here. I'm going to put dark gray on top, and I'll get uh, a light gray on the bottom, as it were, maybe even a little bit darker, and uh, I'll pull this up a little bit just so, because you know you know how like, the shark is, right? So he has like the dark gray on the top, so predators from above can't see him, because he blends in with the bottom of the ocean, and then he's got the, the light uh, gray on the bottom, the white on the bottom, because uh, uh, predators looking up from uh, from below can't see him against the sunlight, right? So you know, that's what we got going on with the shark. If you were to do a shark. Obviously, if you did something else, you'd do something else. Um, and I'm going to put another gradient behind him. Let me just go over here to this gradient. I'm just going to grab a, uh, this right here. And I'm just going to go back to my gradients tool. So I'll go to my fill, find gradient options. And I'll change this to, like, say, something that's befitting this. I'll, I'll, in this case, I'll have a linear gradient that's going to go from uh, maybe light blue to dark blue as it gets deeper and deeper. So I'll go over here to my, my colors here. And I'll find, like, a light blue, kind of like this. And... Um, about a darker blue, like so. And in this case, I'll flip it. I'll flip this more in the center. I'll put a little center point right here in the middle. All right. And what we'll do is we'll just grab this guy here away with you, and I'll just center this. I'll line, I'll touch that right there, that right there, and we'll just Control Shift. Uh, Open bracket. Cool. All right. Well, that's fun. Now, obviously, here what we can do is we can just you know then you know, like maybe turn it on its side and pull it this way, maybe a little bit bigger if we wanted to. I don't know. That's not quite right. We'll just keep it there. Um, all right. So um, whatever you do with uh, with this design, you know, you just uh, uh, just uh, pick a, a palette that fits it. I'm not sure if I like that blue. Let's call it indigo. I don't like that. Choose this one more time. I'm gonna get a bit of a better blue here. Get my HSB. Pull the darkness down a little bit. The saturation down some too. Make it get a little more blue. Saturation up. Saturation down. Down. That's good. Okay, that's what I like. I like that. Less purple, more blue. Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> you would, uh, of course, make this your own, um, and uh, if you want to follow along with me, you can download the picture that I got and just do what I did. Alright, very cool. Can't wait to see you guys produce.